welcome, 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 everybody. It is time. The interview you have been waiting for. As you can see on top of me, I'm ready. Maria's ready. I hope you enjoy this one. Let's get some really quality questions in the chat. Now, all donations, super chats, and will be going directly to Game on Cancer today, guys. So I really would love if you could, you know, spare even a dollar, five dollars, maybe anything you can give. It's going to a really great charity. Um, we've already raised over $3,000, which is amazing. And I'd love to get to 5000 over the next couple of weeks. So... We'll be reading out as many as we can through that. And uh, I'll leave the link here right now. Pop that into the chat. But without further ado, guys, we're going to get into it. I hope you enjoy it. This is one I've been looking forward to. So let's do this. Bravo 6 going dark. <laughs> Okay, enjoy it, guys. Maria, can you hear me? Hey, you can hear me all good? <laughs> hey, I can hear you perfectly. How are you, Dan? How are you? Man, it's so good to see you, so good to meet you. How's, uh, how's everything been? It's been magical. It's been quite surreal ever since uh, Valeria came into my life. Not even from its release, from before the release. It's been, the whole thing has been just a surreal experience. Can you go through that that experience? Because I've heard you speak about it in Spanish before, but I love the English version <laughs> for one. And also I think a lot of people would love to know as well. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, this is my second interview about Valeria, my first one in English. So it's great to reach that audience as well. I mean, Thank you so much for coming on. There's many people in here live right now and they uh, let's just say they love you very much. I love them very, very much. Each and every one of them. I oh. mean, I've been reading the whole thing, like all my social media. I've been uh, paying a lot of attention to it sometimes. Too much attention because I'm shooting something else and I'm just all my attention's there. And then the director's like, Hey, what the, the hell? Like, who are you? Are you Valeria? Are you here? Like, be present. But you know, I mean, it's just it's just so magical. He can't blame so, you. Uh, right? On. Yeah, I know. They they all understand what's going on. They kind of get it. Um, and they've been very supportive as well. And all of my friends and family, and of course. The Call of Duty community, family. I mean, the whole gaming thing is such a new thing to me. And mm. I've come to realize how massive it is. But wait, but let me tell you about the, the story <laughs> about the audition. Right? Yeah. Because you asked me that. Um, so I've been, I moved to LA, like, I don't know, like four years ago. Even though most of my work is in Spanish, like for Latin audiences, Mexican stuff. I traveled to Mexico, to Colombia. I do some things in Miami. I'm in Miami right now. Um, but obviously, given that I speak English and I am Latina and Latinos seem to be kind of like a trend nowadays and it's cool because before it was so hard. Before, you know, we, we didn't like to be recognized as Latinos because it was kind of like a weird minority. But now it's mm -hmm. come to be like, a hot thing. So now it's a good thing to be Latino in music. You know, now all artists want, they want to kind of like rap and sing in Spanish. So, you know, it's it's a great thing that's happening to our community. So I want to mm. take advantage of that. And that's why I moved to LA. Um, even though there's still, it's still a minority, you know, you still kind of have to mm. um, learn like American English so you can be second generation Latina. They can give you roles like that and you don't become like the Latina that speaks with an accent that only has access to like a little bit of the market. But uh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I started auditioning and it was so funny how this how this um got to me because I have my manager, 
and I have my agent, but mm -hmm. then I have my commercial agent. So I do. Man, you got yeah. a lot of agents going on around the world, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, around the world for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You kind of have to have people in charge of you that know the territory. Yeah, Sometimes definitely. they claim to be like, oh, no, no, don't don't worry. I'm going to manage you in like the whole Latin American territory. But it mm. doesn't work like that. Mm. They need to be around. They need to know the right people, et cetera. So, yeah. but especially in the States, actors do have like, you know, it's, it's, for every like aspect of acting, there's a different like office, like team. So I kind of wanted to play the game like they do. So I had, I have my manager and my agent and my commercial agent taking care of like voiceovers. Like I, I, I love working with my voice. I'm a very musical person, even though I'm not a singer, I've done a lot of musical um, roles. So I kind of wanted to use my voice for something else, for characters, for cartoons, for video games. But I had never done like an actual motion capture um, audition where mm. you kind of have to use your whole body. I've only done like voice stuff. And it hasn't happened for me till that point. So it's like, oh, for this one, you actually need to perform. And I'm like, okay, so do I have to do something different? No, no, no it's just like a regular audition. Um, but I came in late because mm. I wasn't I wasn't being considered for this role because I'm traveling a lot and they needed like pure local talent in LA. And even though I live in LA, I travel a lot. So my agent wasn't really considering me for it because you kind of need to be there for whenever they need you. It's a weird dynamic. Like they shoot your it. role throughout a year, mm. but it's like every every month or month and a half, you get mm. a session. So it's like it's very, you it's know, it's demanding. It's, not yeah. your, it's demanding. And also you kind of need to be free for, it, it's very random or they mm, need yeah. you. And it takes, it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, so you actually, how come? Um, why, why did you like decide to, to think of me? And she was like, oh, it's funny because I was listening. I was just going through all the auditions, the voice auditions. And my husband, who is a uh, part of the writer's team, Brian Bloom, heard your voice and he was like mm, who, who's that voice like who is she and she's like no it's maria she's my client but you know i haven't really thought of her for call of duty of course i didn't know it was call of duty right they were like oh this this name mastodon just because we can't really say the real name and i'm like then it's a big a big thing i mean if you if they don't disclose the name it is a big <laughs> thing. So I, I'm like, I'm like kind of nervous about it, but excited. But on the other hand, the only reason why I got the audition was because Brian heard my voice. He, I don't know, wow. it caught his, yeah, yeah. It, it was like, oh, wait, so who is she? Like from far, he was like, whatever in the kitchen, Marnie was like typing and listening. And he's like, who's that voice? And she's like, it's her. And he's like, show her to me. Like, let's Google her or show me the pictures that you have of her. And he's like, oh, maybe she can work for Valeria. We've been having so much, like, problems finding this character. Yeah, why because... were they having problems with the character? I'm interested. There was no one nailing, no one's nailing the sort of femininity or something or... What was yeah, it? it's so funny. <laughs> did you did you know something from before? Because that's exactly what happened. Um, they they were actually like all the like choices that they were making were about making the character super masculine because obviously you you want a super empowered lady that happens to be the head of a cartel. So you go, especially for me, like we have a very popular Latino version of the Queen of the South, La Reina del Sur, because that was the that that was kind of the reference that they gave us. So they said, okay, think of Queen of the South. And then I was like, okay, I can go to Kate del Castillo for this like kind of uh, soap that became super popular, La Reina del Sur. But she's very macho. She's very uh, like she just mm. intimidates from from that masculine like energy. Or I can go to the actual Queen of the South. Oh my God, I lost her name right now. But the actual person, you can you can YouTube like you can Google her and you can find some interviews. Yeah, and and I did. And she's very feminine. If anything, she uses her femininity as her power, as her way to manipulate. So that I thought that was interesting because, you know, you always go to that safe place of make her a macho and shoot some guns and that's it. <laughs> but this girl was like the, that. She was like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I am 
I'm just, I'm here at home. I'm taking care of my husband. I'm washing <laughs> dishes. Like, I have no idea what you're saying. And she's the badass cartel leader. So I'm like, mm, I might use that instead of the obvious. So it was so funny. I did the audition as a, well, actually as a Zoom call, which is really weird. I mean, after the pandemic, auditions have become so weird and not personal. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta give you gotta give it like an extra something. And I was dressed like this. I am wearing my audition um, outfit, <laughs> a, a bit different of how it came to be, but you know, I was like, like this is what she would wear at home probably. <laughs> so I dressed, I dressed up and I did this, literally like this dynamic, yeah. but I just, I just read the scene then I got a call back and yeah, that was that. So it was so crazy that they, you know, got to me through listening to my voice and, you know, it, it, the whole thing was just weird. And then when they said, it took them a while to say, like, you know, you know what you're in for it. Like, you know, where are you, where are you going to be in? And I'm like, where? Call of Duty. And I almost, <laughs> I almost melt. I mean, I was like, you have to be kidding me. Like, what a responsibility. Like, this is huge. And also when I, kind of investigated about the world of gaming like motion capture it it seemed so hard and it was it's almost like a different set of skills you have to learn in order to you know become a character where you have nothing around you how did you how did you find that doing motion capture for the first time wearing the suit going in and also some of your scenes you've got to memorize you know multiple different outcomes because the player can choose a different you know dialogue choice that was insane i mean <laughs> I, I i'm good with memory because i come from the world of telenovelas and you know we shoot i i already kind of evolved to series and movies and other stuff that's why i've been chasing you know la not even about fame or mainstream i want to do like high quality like three scenes a day stuff where you can actually potentialize your you know your skills your acting your art but I come from that world, so it's kind of like a muscle memory. You yeah, know? because I've so, I, yeah. I looked and you've done hundreds and hundreds of episodes of TV. I couldn't believe how many episodes you've done. How quickly are you smashing that out? It's insane because oh you see God. you see hundreds of episodes, but hundreds of episodes mean seven novelas because each novela is 120 episodes. So. Every 120 episodes that you see is just one story, one character. Oh, my goodness. It's, no, 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 no. It's insane, Dan. <laughs> so, you know, in the end, obviously, the stories behind these telenovelas are hyper dramatic. So not only do you have to shoot 30 scenes per day, but they're about yeah. your lover who you found out was your brother and is being <laughs> shot in the head by your father. And Clevela Peraldo, porque lo existe. Mauricio, you know, <laughs> so it's like Jesus, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, my approach to to the craft is, you know, I am method. Like I, I kind of want to buy what the character is feeling, as opposed to remembering things to get to an emotion. I don't have, I am a very like trauma free creature, thank God, and you know, I don't have that to go to. I don't have a, like memories to go to. Yeah. So I kind of developed like the truth of the character, which in these novelas is a very dramatic truth so i'm like exhausted after every project yeah. but at least i learn a lot how to memorize scenes sorry so in I, terms of memory yeah so uh -huh, before uh -huh. we get back to motion capture i just want to ask one more on this so how what is the big difference between those mexican spanish colombian shows versus u.s projects is there a big difference in the acting style for you or is it just the I time think... you're given or what is it I think in terms of like genre, I mean, there's a telenovelas in Spanish, but now there's a lot of actual series, like 10 episode series, mm. one or two or three seasons, just like the American style series being shot nowadays because of all the platforms demanding all the content. So now it, it, if, if you shoot a series in Spanish, it's going to be pretty much the same tone as the american style series whereas a telenovela a, a hundred episode thing it kind of does require it there is a special tone to it where mm. it's like a mix of tv and theater so it's somewhere in the middle it's more histrionic it's more you know dramatic but also expression wise 
you kind of have to go bigger, you know, mm. it's, it's, so it's a thing. It's almost like, yeah, like theater. So, so in that sense, it also demands a lot more energy, even though um, the last thing I did, well, not the last thing, but I did a beautiful series. It's called Mala Yerba about medical cannabis. Uh, it's in Lionsgate. Oh no, Pantalla, Pantalla in the United States. They required us to like, send all the emotion inside to just make it super inner, like, just like mysterious, like kind of like what Anthony Hopkins does, like really keeps okay. it inside. You, you you see his face and it's almost like he's not expressing anything, but through his eyes, you can mm. tell there's a backstory. So yeah, I, I think that's most of what um, series like 10 episode series do and also in Spanish. But if mm. you do the, the 100 episode telenovela, you're going to have to be bigger. So that's that's hard for the case of Valeria. Um, what I caught was acting is supernatural, but you're being digitalized. Right. So there's still a tiny I mean, it's crazy. It's a, like state of the art technology to make your every expression come out. Mm. But still, still, I I caught the feeling that if I'm going to be, I don't know, ironic or all these things that Valeria is or like flirty but naughty but sassy, <laughs> yeah. you kind of wanted to add that bit of extra, like not make it too subtle, but actually let it come out a bit mm. so that the expressions were caught in the digitalizing process and th now that i saw the results i thought hmm, nice call because it's it looks so tiny i made it a big a big bigger but then through this process it caught the exact amount of whatever mm. it is that i wanted to portray interesting so yeah. yeah but all of that you needed so much intuition you know because it's a different world so i arrived there yeah i have skills for telenovela stuff i have skills for movies and series i've i've done it but what do they want and also intimacy um everything else like you have a helmet and you have this thing that kind of blocks your you know the camera blocks your a lot of your area of you know intimacy with the partner sometimes you like collide when you want to be like super intimate because my character is not scared of <laughs> being intimate and being close and using this as intimidation. And also, you know, knowing that she's kind of attractive and woman in the world of, of like big men. And I can come here and I can tell you what to do. But then we had the little hearts with the cameras and we couldn't really <laughs> be as close as I needed. But then yeah. they were like, I kind of had to go and tell them, like, I wanted this to be closer. And like, they're like, don't worry. If that's what you want, we're going to make it closer. But that's the cool thing about working with a team that actually respects your creative freedom. And mm. they did very much so. Almost everything that I said in Spanish was my translation, was my I was going to say that. It. Yeah. I've heard that from uh, Ramon. I think he told me, yeah. And a, a lot of the guys that work with you on, on that scene, the interrogation scene, they said, you're such a pro. Every line was memorized. They were like uh, a line messer. He, he, he was shocked how good you were and that he was sort of just like gobsmacked, you know, in that scene where oh. you two are bouncing off each other. <laughs> that was insane. That was crazy because regardless of the memory, yeah, the interrogation scene was crazy because it's not just mem memorizing all the possible outcomes de depending on what the player decides. It's going back to, first of all, the same position. So you're going to have to, you know, you have to remember after going, after reacting to whatever answer, you have to go back to, to main position. <laughs> so, so it's hard to, it's hard to remember. And also you have to remember how were you mentally? So you're still not angry about this, about A, B. So if you go back to C, you're chill. But it, but from A to B, you're not that chill, but you're, that you're still giving this person a chance. So you got to remember psychologically where the character was and physically too. So, and it was long. It took us a whole day to do that because obviously, I mean, consider all the possible options. <laughs> it's, it's a long, it's, it's just a long scene if you if you put them all together. 
but oh, it was so interesting so interesting and at the moment like i had never played with you know with fake guns like plastic guns i mean i had but you know i had to like pull them off pull them out of my pants and kind of like go like this so how do i shoot how do i i have to look like i have a lot of experience mm. um and it was like velcro so it was hard to like pull out but i had to <laughs> like I had a like I had a pocket that wasn't there I know they fixed uh, that I know they fixed the whole yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. but I wanted to do it as best as I could so it's obviously like the pressure of just showing them that I could learn fast and and it was a process of learning fast I mean a session per month you kind of forget you know and I was working yeah. I was working in Colombia doing a completely different thing. It was a series, what I was doing, like a 10 episode natural acting thing, okay. but it was far from being Valeria. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was a villain too. I was a villain for Disney. Oh, really? And I had to, yeah, and I had like superpowers. So, you know, oh, it, was, okay. it was a bit different, but we were both at least, you know, doing some damage and being a little <laughs> evil. But then I had to switch immediately to Valeria, wear my helmet, my suit. And kind of like play with my imagination, kind of like go back to a child's imagination because theater, it's not theater, it's not a movie, it's not TV, at least. And even in theater, you have props, you have stuff, you know, you, you, but here you kind of have to make everything up, uh, everything that surrounds you. They would show it to you with a camera. You would see on a screen what surrounded us, which to me was just Oh my God, mind blowing. <laughs> like my hacienda, I was like, okay, so that little apple box thing, that's that's like the fountain. And I'm like, okay, show it to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can't I, I can't really walk through here and here. You know, it's so funny. Ooh. And oh, you're locked in this container thing. It's like super hot. So, you know, body language wise. But the studio thing, the room is very cold. I actually learned that I had to wear like um what do they call it? Like thermal, like thermal clothes, like what you wear to uh -huh. go to ski. I, I, I wore like, I mean, I'm a tropical monkey. I'm a Latina. I am Ecuadorian, Colombian. It was so cold. I had to wear some extra layers. Underneath <laughs> this, underneath the suit. Oh, wow. Yeah, the chilies. <laughs> I had to wear them chilies, but like underneath, because otherwise I couldn't fake that I was just oh, so hot because I was like this. And it reads your whole body. It's so crazy, right? Guys, we are going to get to some of your fabulous questions. Please keep them coming. I, I've already seen um, many. Um, Maria, I wanted to know, like, is, is this something you've been getting lately, Vin villain sort of villainous roles? Or is this something you've always had throughout your career? Or is it just starting to come up now? It is something that has that I have been doing throughout my career. Mm. Um, got to a point where I moved, even though... I was, I mean, I'm not even obsessed about being the star, the protagonist, mm. the good girl. If anything, I kind of kind of feel, especially in our Latino stories, that the good, but even like pretty much everywhere. If I see a movie like a Marvel thing or a Maleficent or I don't know, stuff like that, it's always like the good girl gets, eh, it's kind of lame. I mean... It has to be a really well-written role in order for the good girl to have something interesting coming to her. And I like a challenge. To me, like, just plain, uh, I don't know. It, it, it feels plain like Jane, I'm wasting no time. Good. Yeah. yeah, no good, no good. Mm. So, I don't know. There, there's something about, even though I feel like I look like a good girl, but there's something that they see in me that they're like, maybe maybe they get to know me and I do have, like, this... You got a bad Strong side. Character. I, 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 I kind of do. My friends that know me very, very well, mm. they're like, Valeria, oh, come on. That's you. You didn't even have to act. And I'm like, shut up. Okay, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, uh. but yeah, maybe they read through me. So I've done at least like, I don't know. I've been a villain like 10 times, like 12 times maybe. For oh, my... so you've done more villain than heroic stuff. You would say I've done more villain. Yeah. I've done more villain. Okay. But then something happened. I switched companies and they started considering me as the good girl, but for different stories, like for stories where the good girl has more than one, you know, that is an actual human with different, you know, 
textures of her personality. So you, you mm. it's not like it's not like our a cartoon, like a pure white person. Like yeah. I was the good girl, but the good girl was kind of like a gang, like a yeah, like a street gang member, you know. And she was good, but she belonged to like a dark thing or a good girl, but it was about uh a soul that kind of possessed my body and became something else. So the good girl is fighting to kind of remove that soul from her. So it's been a good girl, but in a kind of weird kind of, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like a dark, <laughs> dark ish story. So it's not just like, la la la, but it's like you root for her, but she's not like a, pretty princess you know what's what's your reaction when you when you see this the trailers and the game come out and the fan reception to your character it was insane i mean it was unbelievable really like i uploaded a video <laughs> i uploaded a video with some of the cut scenes and i think it's on a million views you know within a very short time frame um just you know, the, just the different options of valera what can happen it's just crazy what how was it for you like sort of seeing that I couldn't believe it. Mm. As I said, it's still surreal. Like from yeah. how it got to me to today, where I still check my social media and there's still new messages, new memes, <laughs> new drawings, whatever the drawings are, you know. Yeah, there's, <laughs> even, some, there's some interesting even, ones. Even the sexy. <laughs> oh, man. I, I love them all. I love yeah. them all. I mean, probably some. You, probably ones. some you can't post, hey? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it doesn't mean I don't love them. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm okay about all of it because all of it is love and all of it is people investing so much energy. Like, yeah. oh my God, like those are so pro. And um, at first I was like, yeah, I mean – they actually, they had warned me, my, my oh, yeah. gamer friends, they told me, if your character is successful, you're going to see yourself naked in a, in a lot of places. And I was like, oh my God, I can't wait. Like if I, if I don't <laughs> see at least like a side boob situation, I'm not going to be successful. Like it's not going to be how I expected it. So I was waiting for that side boob to happen. Little did I know it was going to be that <laughs> But listen, oh, man. I was yeah. like, I was like, it's such a, I mean, it's a very powerful character and, and the story, it's, it's a very interesting part of the mission, yeah. but it's, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a short thing. Like it's not a lot. It's mm. not like Alejandro. It's not like the other boys like Ghost or Gaz or Price. Like it's, it's a, it's a little, you know, kind of a guest star role. That's what I'm saying. You know, You've made such an impact in such a short time. It's crazy. I couldn't believe it because mm. I I never expected, you know, even some people say that most of, not most, but a lot of, of people don't play like the campaign version. They just go to multiplayer and just shoot at each, at each other. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, then maybe, maybe I'm not going to be seen by that many people. Maybe you know, the pro gamers don't play the campaign. It's lame. Let's just move to blah, blah, blah. So, you know, whatever reaction is going to be a, a nice reaction and whoever likes it or, I mean, I, I was just expecting like your average, you know, yeah. congrats. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are my friends, my friends that kind of noticed that it was me or whatever, because it looks like me. It's not exactly me. It's a little more like evil. There's, there's a bit of this, <laughs> but, um, but you can tell it's me. So I was, I was more, to tell you the truth, I was expecting more of like, oh, my friends realizing that it was me. But yeah. then that week, even before the actual premiere, I started getting like, boo, 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 oh, boo. man. And I was like, really, man, this cannot be even real. And then the <laughs> articles, like articles to me were, were a oh, big thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because articles, like articles are just about the game, but articles about my character. Mm. So I was like, and then Forbes talking about what the impact of Valet. And I was I, I, I was shooting at the time. And I just, I could not like focus because it was just so, it was just so mind blowing. I was, I was in pure bliss. I couldn't believe that, you know, I put so much effort to Valeria to tell you the truth. I had to travel oh, back and tell. forth mm. like nine hours in and out. It, it, it took a lot just to 
you know, be able to be there and to create her and to focus and learn all these things. So it was so rewarding, so humbling, so heart melting because, you know, this is like the smartest um, crew like that I have done something for amongst the messages of like mommy and the dog memes. And, you know, there's a whole cartel a mommy. Whole, is that yeah, what you yeah, say? Is that what you're talking mommy. about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same thing. Now I know. I take notes. I take notes of everything I see because I want to be able to like communicate with them, you know, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's like, what are they like? Like, what's 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 their deal? And it's like, okay, mommy. Okay, they simp. Okay, um, I don't know. Like all the memes are just hilarious, but. In between those, I, I got really like smart comments about my acting and the delivery yeah. and mm. the nuances and the, you know, everything that they told me. I was like, wow, it's very, very little do I get these like super like smart, like detailed, positive criticism about the acting. And it's so funny. Like I haven't gotten anything negative. I'm like, I'm okay. Like I can take it. Like whatever you didn't like, share but everyone, everybody <laughs> liked, everybody liked to share with Valeria, and everybody kind of wanted to be like killed by her and hurt by her. They kind of, kind of <laughs> like being hurt. So I was like, "Oh, you like being hurt? Okay, Halloween is coming. What would my new fan base from Call of Duty appreciate? Oh, okay, let's go dominatrix style. So I literally wore an outfit of a dominatrix." just for is them. that why you and did it were... wow yeah on your yeah. instagram yeah yeah i did i did because <laughs> it's like they seem to like that they seem to like powerful women women who like kind of beat them up they're asking me for like <laughs> can you send me like a voice note insulting me in spanish can you please say puta madre gabriela can you please say you know <laughs> they just want that they want that so I kind of gave them a bit of that. <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing! And what's it what's it like actually seeing your likeness in a video game character? Like when you look at that Valerius scenes, and you see it's you. You know, it's your movements. It's your, you know. It is. It is so insane because I was like, I mean, I have played. I played. I played. Um, I I have played Call of Duty. I played mm. uh, Detroit Become Human. Oh, nice! Uh, which, which also has like a lot of really cool graphics, like really cool. Oh yeah. And also Resident Evil Five, like a long time ago, which also looked pretty great. I mean, not not like this. So I didn't know. That's the most random game. two games, by the way. I think. <laughs> I love how they're the two games you've played. It's just so random. But go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> and Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain, too. <laughs> okay, there you go. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, I guess I kind of like the RPG, like, you know, the whole not too, like, I'm not too skillful, even though I want to learn now. I want to learn, and I want to learn in Twitch. Like, I kind of, I just kind of want to learn and want to have people, like, kind of like guide me through the experience yeah, of learning stream. how to play you should stream on right i mean you'd get a f even, few thousand even watching make, from it. well i mean they're probably going to make fun of me because i'm not good at it but what if i learn through that experience i don't know i'm just brainstorming here yeah, yeah. but the likeness was insane i mean i was like hmm i wonder if i'm actually going to look like myself maybe yeah i mean is technology that far along but after seeing how the process was i mean I'm sure you know, but it was so all the crazy cameras around you, the flash all at the same time. So you that did was, that, yeah. That was yeah, I did that. Like that was mm. the first step of the whole thing. Yeah, like my first appointment with um at, with Activision with uh, Infinity Ward was in this room, um with this sphere of like cameras and flashes and yeah, it was so crazy and robotics, like they just get you so futuristic. <laughs> and I had to stay there for three hours at least, like a couple hours, oh, maybe wow. three. Shit. Like my, my face hurt after that. I mean, just for them to create the map of your every single possible expression <laughs> took like more than a couple hours. Do you have to sit and there and go like there. this? You know, all those Pretty weird... <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They show you, they have like a little screen you're sitting there in that sphere, 
like this and you see what they do and you go, mm, ah. <laughs> you do the whole thing. And then after that, you have to go to the audio studio. And this is people, you know, this is a team that works with everybody, with mm. with DC, with Marvel, with all the Hollywood movies that do, you know, motion capture. It's the same team, you know, Blur, mm. uh, Love, Death and Robots, people like, oh, it's yeah. just big big it, it's it's a very pro team and i'm like so honored to even be there but so like i was like in shock of what it took to make the character digital mm. and then and, and another couple hours just like recording your sounds like your like how you sound with with an accent without an accent uh crying yelling happy and mm. another couple hours doing that so i was like okay if this is a process, then it must be quite accurate. But never did I expect to see what I saw. I mean, the pores. Like, I could see a little, like, thing, like a little zit that I had that day. I could see, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like that. Like, oh, this is my, my kind of wrinkle that I that I don't like and kind of want to get rid of. But Look, not I'm really not, I'm not seeing it. any wrinkles, Maria. I think you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw my little details. Yeah. And I was like, and they, they, they sent me a couple stills, like like pictures from the company so I could really zoom uh, in. Yeah. Those, those are the ones that I am posting lately because I the first time I posted like fan stuff and somebody made fun of me like, oh my God, look at those screenshots from the game screen. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Guys, like I totally need like pro stuff because I'm getting attention. So please, and they sent me like uh, like the actual stills, and I zoomed in and every detail, yeah. like every line of expression. Amazing. It's just, and yeah. not just of me, like everything surrounding me is just so crazy. And the photography, like how the light comes in, everything, like Las Almas. Oh my God! Oh like, yeah. Of, how Pinterest it was, like like deep and dark, but also so beautiful and Latino and Pinterest. I, I don't know. The whole thing was just so well thought and the outcome, I was, I couldn't believe it. Like I, 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 I can't, I'm, it's just hypnotizing. <laughs> I'm so honored. I'm so honored. I'm so, oh, It's amazing. It's a whirlwind. Uh, more normal, $20 donation. And, and again, guys, everything here today is going to Game on Cancer, a dear charity that uh, are helping research uh, for cancer and, and trying to stop this beast more normal hello from germany i wanted to know what was the hardest part of getting into character maria um i think it had to do with um with what i had on me like first of all uh you're in a super cold green room it's not green but you know empty room first of all getting to know the, my 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 partners like you know all of them were so big and intimidating and I was the <laughs> only girl there and I'm tiny I am Latino tiny yeah, yeah. and they're huge and then here we are all dressed up funny and the helmet and this thing with the camera it has a flash on it that is almost like your phone flash and it's always there shooting at you so it almost like blocks your sight it's it's you know the light that you get from the camera is is kind of like blocking you from have your full on 100 mm. percent view mm. so even if you're imagining it's hard to imagine when you're like oof kind of like startled by light and then you have your you know the actors thank god they were all so nice they're mm. all so sweet like so so patient because most of them have already been in these games and acting like this before but you know getting in that trust mode with the other actors and kind of ignoring the fact that you don't have your act your real props and you have especially this light that i'm telling you about and the way that they direct is different like you have everything has cameras so you're not working for a camera you're just kind of like everywhere so you kind of have to be sometimes you get used to oh i have this camera here so i don't have to worry about my hand here so i just scratch my leg well you know <laughs> you focus on what whatever's aiming at you and here you have to be 
fully aware of like your Everything. whole body be- yeah. because it's a 360 kind of situation. So that was uh, complicated to like kind of get in that mood. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, apart from that, I feel, yeah, and you kind of have to go in a Z pose. Every time like before and after a scene happens, they say Z pose. And I have to kind of like go like this. And they're, they're like tiny little, and I kept forgetting. I'm like, oh, wait, <laughs> obviously towards the end, I was a queen of Zippo. Like, cut. Ah, oh, <laughs> like, we're going to start. Okay, I'm ready. You're making a dance out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, mm, mm. Oh, of course. Of course I would dance salsa and reggaeton. Every time they would check my my feature, like my, my sensors and everything, I would go, because you would see your little. Oh, that's uh, great character thing without a face but you would see like yeah kind of like the skeleton of it and i would go <laughs> when i when i got comfortable but yeah at the beginning it was more about you know feeling my my partners like getting you know because they were very intimate scenes and i had to intimidate them i had to have power over them so yeah. they had to kind of they had to kind of be like real actors not ego actors because some people especially in my in a novella world sometimes they they would refuse to you know lose power over a woman but like really line... still to this day oh wow absolutely man a line was so generous with that like the chemistry with a line was so good because oh, yeah. he was so willing to actually go with the flow of it i was so so thankful to have him as like my main partner yeah. because he was first of all the most friendly like funny cool guy and then so committed to his acting to the point of understanding that he had to even though he tried to bark at me he he had to have some sort of like like i i like he like i had to be able to kind of bit of respect on top of it Mm. yeah and Mm. i could i could feel his respect even though he kind of so could i so could i I. yeah he knew that you weren't (laughs) he knew you weren't to be messed with you know that came yeah, across. Totally. Dan, I want to know about the cancer thing. That's so that's so beautiful. Tell tell me a bit about it. Yeah. Am I being part of it right now? <clears throat> yeah, so anyone it? anyone that answer anyone that's donating to ask you questions here today, all that money is gonna go to researching for cancer. So this is uh, a part of Cure Cancer Australia. Um, you know, I think seventy five dollars goes a long way and then you know as you go up they can do real research the more money that goes in and you know we've made a lot of progress already with brain cancer and breast cancer and things like that so their whole mission is to you know for us to be the last generation that has to really deal with it which you know I've got faith I know you've probably got faith you know it's and everyone's been affected by cancer as well so I know I have, and um, I'm sure you have. You know, so it's just a horrible thing, yeah. but we're we're trying to do, uh, you know, trying to battle this beast. But um, yeah, so all donations today all will be going straight to them. There's a link in the description. So thank you, Maria, thank again you. for being here. Okay, you are amazing, Maria. That's it. Twenty dollars. <laughs> gracias. <laughs> oh. gracias, muchas gracias. That's so great. I mean. So honored to also be a part of this and to be able to contribute to what's most needed and whatever I can do to help and to give back. That's that's what we can use our extra attention for, not just posting selfies and am I sexy or, or not, but actually, you know, creating something and being able to give back because we get so much. I mean, at least I'm so fortunate that it is almost my responsibility to give back. So knowing that. I am doing a little thing today by talking to you. That's amazing. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for making me a part of it. Oh, our pleasure. Ghost, $10. Uh, so thankful you're a part of this community. Uh, was Valeria and Alejandro ex-lovers? <laughs> I love that they say that. And, you know, I kind of... I think that without even like mentioning it, we kind of developed that underlying sexual tension that people are seeing, but there isn't really anything written. And Brian was very detailed about, you know, my backstory and the life of Valeria, like the reason why she's 
as strong as she is and as intimidating as she is, is because she had to grow in a world of, you know, males of like brothers. And she went and she also um, did her military, but she wouldn't be rewarded as her brothers were because apparently, and this seems to be the truth. If you, you know, go through military school, boys get like a card that would give them access to a bunch of things and just privilege in general and girls don't get it so i think mm -hmm. this was like that breaking point for her where she was like oh really like just because i'm a woman i'm not entitled to all these things i am going to become what i want like i am i this is revenge like i'm going to be more powerful than all of you guys and i'm going to create a community that will respect me the way you guys didn't so that part i know and then you know through the through, through her um military dynamics with Alejandro, she decided to turn her back on them. But I do want to believe, and I did play it so that there was some sort of, I don't know, if like romance, but definitely sexual tension. I'm pretty sure something happened between There's them. There's a history. And Come on. There, there has to be. There mm. has to be. Mm. I mean, the way the scenes are written and the way that we played them and the way that they came out, there's definitely extra tension that goes, you know, beyond pure, you know, uh, oh, she, betrayal, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, there yeah. has to be, but I don't know, maybe, maybe they develop something later. I mean, uh, I let's no hope idea. so. Let's hope so. Maria. I don't know what's going to happen. People keep asking me about if I'm going to become an operator, if I'm going to be a multiplayer, if there's going to be more of that story. And they were always very open. There was always a lot of openness in our conversation as to, you know, this, you know, this happens like this. Nobody knows if this guy died. Nobody knows if she, you know, she, she didn't go to jail. Like she, she escaped, like she's out, she's mm. free and she's alive. So, you know, a lot of things can happen and I am praying that they will. They're I'm still, praying too. You know, I think we're all praying. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this can't be the last of your character after what's happened to you and the reception. And I cannot right? imagine that you, that's it for you. There's no way. There's no way, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, I have hopes. I have hopes. And, and I love the team. The team, I mean, it's, it was a love story with all of them. The director, Jeff, just out of control, loving, beautiful human being, everybody. So, you know, I, I still have a lot of hopes that I'll be back in that room at some point. It's always very slow, you know, the whole just making Valeria just her short but intense uh, participation was took almost a year so you know wow. i'm hope i'm hopeful but i'm also patient because there are times that they're very different than shooting a movie or a series so i don't know maybe in a couple of months maybe i don't know maybe, maybe something will happen Ooh. when did you and do I that did you, you do oh you better was that uh 2021 <laughs> that you did did this work yeah um no it was no. yeah it, it was the end of 2021 and it was till I don't know, like yeah. three months ago. Oh, wow. I mean, I, yeah, 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 like four months ago. So all of 2022. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Nightly, Valentine, how was it to work? Oh, sorry, Graves Place says, uh, how was it to work with Brian Bloom? The best. Brian was the best. First mm. of all, he's, as I told you, he's the reason why I kind of even got an audition in the first place. It's not like he decided that that i was it but he got me into the audition room so that mm. i am very thankful for that little accident of him just listening to this like voice over audition uh, how crazy that was that yeah. was but then also he was he was my personal guide like for me i was getting into this world completely unknown world and being able to he was so reachable he was there every single session and he, he was also, he was kind of like show running because not only was he a writer, he was also helping with direction and, and also especially like filling us in, in terms of the story. In the beginning, we had like a little zoom with all the new uh, characters, but also the recurring ones where they sh did the whole like run through the game and the story behind it. But it's a lot to take in. I mean, a lot of things happen in modern warfare too. So it's like, yeah. and yeah. not coming from that world of like 
playing the the ones before yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. a lot of context yeah. so he was so generous in terms of like sharing the context especially the you know the little details that i needed in order to give shape to valeria and her background and you know what i needed to know in terms of what valeria's participation in that particular mission was it was him all him sitting with me having coffee with me in infinity ward and just talking to me as much as I needed. And I had a lot of questions, like I had them written down and he was the one answering every single one of them. Wow. And for some of the details, he was even like, you know, I had thought that maybe this was the reason why she behaved like this or that, or, or maybe this was uh, her hidden agenda in terms of what she wanted to get from this or that. But why don't we create something together as well? You can also kind of contribute to the story, which to me, that's heaven. Being you don't able get that to... often, do you? No. You're usually kind of like just a little kind of like <laughs> a puppet, toy. A puppet, yeah. You're kind of like a puppet. Yeah. And yeah. You're a puppet. And, and you have to, even though you don't agree, and sometimes you got to you gotta give life to the puppets because you become your character. You understand the character at some point even more than whatever writer or director can understand it. But they... But they usually won't give you that power because I don't know egos, whatever. Mm. But mm. but these guys were so like just humble and human and cool and generous that he would allow me to even contribute at some point, especially when I already kind of owned when I had already embraced Valeria and I understood her a bit more. It felt like a like a teamwork. So I am. I mean, Brian was Brian and Jeff were like my. And every time they liked somebody, like they were all so positive and they were just, their, their feedback was so loving. They were just injecting dopamine into my system every <laughs> single time. Like every time they had something wonderful to say and very specific. It didn't seem to be like, oh yeah, you go, mm. had a girl. It was like, girl, you're nailing, you're doing this well and that and how you're, you know, portraying this and how you're that. So it was always like very, they were encouraging me in a very, truthful in a very authentic way and we were always laughing and giving you know like lunch time and they, we had little breaks because it was like really tough intense oh, yeah. days so they they made it so that it felt really good and not like slavery which sometimes you can feel that way and, and it starts feeling like like a real job and not like you're playing for them it, it, it always they, they always took care of making us feel like it was still a game we we're doing a game so we might as well feel like we're playing and and that was that was a key thing to really get into the character in a more you know joyful and committed way did you know also know that uh brian was a main character in a call of duty he'd done all this before did he mention that to you or did you know that? oh my god he said he he had been an actor, but I didn't know it was in Call of Duty. Yeah, he was in one about five years ago. He was the main star. No way! Yeah. Oh my god, I need to look it up. What's what's the game's name? It is is called Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I believe the name oh is. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm gonna 20, look it up. 2015 or twenty sixteen. One of the two. Yeah, yeah. So did he look like himself? He or did. Was he yeah, like exactly. Exact replica, yeah. So you got to check it out oh after this God. interview, yeah. You might find but it interesting. Sh- yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love how I mean, you don't, just... you didn't know that. That that just shows that he's very, very humble guy as well. Super yeah. humble. Yeah. Super humble. She, he was just all about us. Rarely did he talk about himself or, or like whatever achievements. He was just very, mm. very passionate about his writing, and he really wanted to share everything that he could from his imagination, like really wanted to transmit like everything that he had felt writing it. And it was all about the product. It was never about him. At some point he said he had acted. But now that I know this, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> thoughts, That's so cool. Thoughts on the artwork, the crazy art, we have mentioned this, thoughts on the crazy artwork and the Twitter crushes uh, from crazy. AOBA. Crazy. Amazing. I mean, <laughs> I've, been, I've been posting... Uh, the ones that I can post, <laughs> I couldn't believe. I mean, first of all, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of really talented people. Like, how do you get to do these graphics with such detail? Because some of them, I mean, I get all styles, right? Like kind of like the cosplay, like 
Japanese kind of ones, ones that you can see that they're just hand like drawn. Yep. And the digitalized ones are so insane because they also, you know, it's it's also got like pores and hair and beautiful like like the eyes are so real. Everything is just insanely good. Like there's a lot of really talented artists drawing these things. I would love to see like if anyone could share with me the process of them doing that, I would really appreciate that because mm. I'm like, oh my God, like if anything, huh, I want to, you know what I've been thinking? I, I'm thinking, hey, so these guys, like I've been trying, a lot of people are like, you know that this person that you reposted is actually drawing you super naked. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm still reposting, but I want to see how he draws me naked. So I get in <clears throat> and there's like a subscription that I have to pay for and I'm like, oh, really? Is that how this works? This whole rule, <laughs> rule 34 or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but yeah. apparently it takes money. So I'm like talking to my friends and I'm like, oh, really? Is that how this works? I'm just going to hire a couple of these super talented actors. No, not actors, artists, like drawing people. And I am going to create like an OnlyFans for <laughs> Valeria. Like, like, how's that? Like, how's that? I'm pretty sure I would get into terrible like, <laughs> trouble for the rights of the character, but I can just, I don't know. Maybe it's not Valeria. Maybe it's, maybe it's Valentina. <laughs> and then I'll just, I'll just do a little only. I mean, if people are getting money for it, like, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I know I'm what kidding. you mean. I know. It was I an know. idea, but I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am very appreciative. I mean, if anything that only contributes to, to my, happiness to my dopamine like i'm so honored i'm so flattered by every single person drawing my character that actually looks like me so it's a very personal thing you know sometimes you're a character in these games and i am craving it so bad like for me i have hopes that it takes so long like so much time and obviously money to create like the digital maps of a person so that it becomes a character like the, the scanning of the expression, the sound uh, recording, the, there is a body scan as well. Like it's at least three days of like full day working on creating your digital like character. Mm. And then they'll do the hair and the clothing and the whole thing, they'll design it themselves. But they have you already. So I'm like, maybe if they like you and they like your work, it's that one role that you don't have to look exactly how you look to book because next time you're a witch or a zombie or an alien exactly right or a ghost. Yeah. yeah so i'm like i'm so hopeful that if they liked it maybe i can continue in this world of you know gaming not just as valeria if she comes back but as different characters right that well, doesn't you can look like anyone don't... you can you can literally that's... that's the beauty of it isn't it yeah that, that i'm also very excited about like being able to come back as a different character that maybe doesn't look like me but obviously valeria is a very personal one mm. because she is she she is me playing someone else but she looks like me and the expressions are my exact expressions and what i did with my nose and eyes and brows so obviously it's even it's got even more value that they really liked her because it's it's, it's more of who i am so the fact that i'm seeing myself drawn you know mm. not not a yeah witch i get or a zombie. it i get it yeah 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 right yeah. like to me it, it really appeals to my own like self you know so it's like it's it's almost like a spiritual experience <laughs> to see no like for real to see them all drawing me and and you know drawing even if my boobs are out or whatever is a form of love i mean they're, <laughs> they they're they're sharing their love in whatever way if they feel attracted to this uh dominating character well, I'm still very flattered because that was kind of the point too. She's using her, you know, her her attractiveness, her sexual, you know, appeal to to also uh, create, you know, weakness mm. to the these big men. That that was Valeria's um, objective as well. So if fans and you know simps and com the community, I love how you know that word that, now. Did you know that word no. before this? <laughs> of, of course not. I have everything written down. <laughs> everything. <laughs> hey. So the 
the the, the fu- UGC I really love the UGC, UGC yeah okay there we go <laughs> UGC I love it the, so you said that you did the dominatrix sort of Halloween thing this year what about next year you do a cosplay <laughs> of Valeria what do you reckon that could go well, all right let me tell you something I I didn't have the opportunity I was invited to Amsterdam I don't know if you saw yeah some like promotion yeah. pieces for for like the characters actually looking like they looked in the game and they went there and they did a lot of like beautiful shootings and content and i couldn't be a part of it i was invited but i couldn't go um because i was working and it took a lot to go to amsterdam from latin america so i Mm. couldn't i couldn't be absent for for that long so now i'm like "Mm, i want to do something about it so literally I already purchased the whole Valeria oh, package. Oh, nice. So I, nice. I have it. I have it there. So I'm waiting for the awesome. right moment. Even though I might do something later on with uh, Infinity Ward where I look like Valeria. I think we're going to do some stuff or maybe some pictures or something. They kind of reached out, but I'm not. I haven't been confirmed as to when or, or what. And that's probably going to look a lot more pro but i also want to play with it yeah i want to find out what i can do i mean i guess dressing up in halloween isn't violating any rights right no that's what i'm saying know. yeah you're just having fun yeah yeah exactly yeah. i i just want to, I, I want to talk to them to be able that i'm not to know that i'm not violating anything in terms of the rights to use their character but i guess dressing up in halloween doesn't count as any of that maybe doing an only fans will no i'm kidding yeah. I'm not do that. <laughs> that might be the one where you get in trouble uh... <laughs> but yeah 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 for sure i got the gear i got the gear guys i got the gear i might i might play a little with it i might open a tiktok just because i don't have tiktok oh, and i know a lot of gamers me. i know a lot of you don't yeah, have a TikTok yeah, yeah. I, yet? You're going to gain like a million followers in a day. I'm going to uh, start playing with that. Maybe that's the first uh, the first Valeria cosplay situation. Oh, wow. I got a couple of cosplayers Shit. that I really love. I'm like, but should I do it as, as the actress who played it? But like, whatever, right? I think people are going to appreciate it. Wow. I just want to play with it. I love your little funny, you know, Instagram reels and videos. They're hilarious where you just mime stuff. And I, I was just laughing yeah, yeah, yeah. the other day. It's, it's very funny. You got to keep that going. <laughs> Soaps Mohawk, I'm so happy to be back and I'm happy to see Maria right now. This makes my day so much. $50 donation. Thank you. Soaps Yay. Mohawk. Wow. Oh, thank you, mi amor. That's so generous. Gracias, gracias. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be able to share with you in English because that's most of the community I feel. So it's great that I can actually, you know, be here for you because you've been here for me for this whole, I don't know, month, month and a half. It's gone quick, hasn't it? Shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Johnny. But very thankful. Hola Maria. Mexican here. I love your performances, Valeria, part of Le Rihanna del Sur, the fictional one as well as the real one. What type of research did you do for the role? I hope I didn't butcher that question, Johnny. Did you Johnny understand half of that? Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, La Reina del Sur. Yeah, it's it's what we were talking about. Hola Johnny, ¿cómo estás? Te mando muchos besos. Um yeah, my research had all to do, they did send me like a couple of videos about a couple of cartels and how they operate and how crazy and deadly and bloody they are because there's something about Mexican culture, especially, I mean, I, I am Ecuadorian. I was born and raised in Ecuador. My family, they're Colombian. So like I am 100% Colombian blooded, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived in Mexico. I lived in Mexico for five years. That's why I guess I can um, speak Mexican, like with a Mexican accent. Uh, because I, I actually played a lot of Mexican characters and had a couple of Mexican boyfriends. That's very good to learn an accent or a language. <laughs> a, a boyfriend a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Yeah, very necessary to learn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so terrible. I'm so terrible. But no, you're like, not. No, you're not. <laughs> but uh, what I, my own personal research, as I was telling Dan, I kind of looked at the Reina del Sur that we all know that you mentioned, uh, played by amazing Kate del Castillo. 
But then I also looked at the real one and, and I looked at all the videos that um, Activision sent me to check out kind of like how deadly they are and how, how unafraid, like how, how they're not really scared of anything. They've been around death and torture mm. and blood. And that's how I wanted to play this lady. Like she's been around stuff. So that's why she's not really, she's not even scared of her own death. She just has missions to accomplish and she needs to become bigger and more powerful. That's it. And she has such like, a great support like she that's why she's el sin nombre because she knows that she cannot reveal first of all the fact that she's a female because she then people are going to get the wrong ideas but also because she needs to have the proper alliances without people you know being anonymous helps a lot in terms of creating new friends even because maybe your friends are enemies of your other friend but nobody will know So she's a, she's a very strategic person, but the tone of Valeria definitely comes from the real deal, like the actual Reina del Sur. Like, let me let me just find out her name because Sandra Avila Beltran. So this is the actual Reina del Sur. Amazing. Sandra Avila Beltran. Bit of a legend. And she's yeah. like, you see, she's like, mm, and she does her hair, and she's like, her nails are perfect, just like Valeria's. Have you seen Valeria's nails? No, They're I like haven't. Hot pink. Are oh, they? check them out. Oh, they're hot pink. Wow, I'm I like, need to look at that. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So when I found out that that Sandra was a lot more, you know, I'm not gonna say interesting because Kate's character is amazing, but more feminine yeah. and more powerful because of that. I chose her as a reference and of course i did my own thing but i wanted to make her flirty and sassy and gonna, i think that's how she came out you're gonna like this one i think i'm in love from amelia <laughs> amelia oh twenty dollar donation i think i'm a bit in love there you go <laughs> i i love i love when when girls i'm so much more flattered when girls are like are like giving me compliments because I feel like like guys are a bit more mm, basic in terms of, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult you. No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, I'm kind of like a guy myself. But, you know, they're a bit like, oh, boobs, uh, oh, yeah. ass, oh, this, oh, that. But I think for Valeria, it's been more about her, like her character. Character like work. Her, yeah. yeah, I think, I think what, what boys have liked about her has more to do with her personality. But in real life, guys tend to be very, you know, uh, uh, I get it. very yeah. like, like their, their animal energy comes mm. first, you know, mm. like, like just uh, they become lions looking for, you know, whatever <laughs> curves and shapes. Whereas girls, <laughs> girls are more drawn towards like mind games and personality and intellect and, You know, their their flirt, especially living in LA and going to all these like gay clubs and stuff. I love going and I actually love flirting with girls. I don't like girls, but I but I can flirt with them. I like being liked by girls. I can <laughs> like a girl. I'm just not I'm not I'm not I'm not there. I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm I'm this close from being there and I would love to be there. Like in the bi world, I am this close. There's Ah, oh, there's something that, that doesn't allow for me to actually <laughs> like them, yeah, but yeah, I like I flirting it. with them, and they're like, they're they're all into mind games. So Emilia, I appreciate you. There you go, uh, Rom Romk. I, I don't know if I got that name. Sorry, mate. Uh, Six dollar donation. Are you getting recognized as Valeria in the real world? Love you, Maria. Hi, baby. Oh my God, I have. Five more minutes, but yeah, yep. I I have been I have been recognized for sure. Uh, I, in my production, a lot of like uh, the technicians, like camera people and sound and light, they they. I mean, I wasn't aware of the fact that gamers are a large group in terms of age, in terms of everything. Like you can't really, it's not really a targeted world. There's people playing from like. 15 to 55 i mean it's it's just a yeah. large group in terms of age in terms of everything of like where you're from your race your everything everything it's just crazy how how it goes beyond all these things and 
you can find them pretty much everywhere. And their dads and their working people and their executives and their little boys and their students and their doctors, like you find them everywhere, especially I feel like, I mean, they've been there all the time, but I feel the pandemic even turned some people into gamers that even weren't yes. before because, yeah. because it, it provided like a great deal of entertainment where you had to stay home and do pretty much nothing. So yeah. I, 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 as I walked through like the studio here in Miami, a lot of people were like, el sin nombre. And I'm like, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Are you for real? <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's been really crazy. Uh, like even in that sense, it's been surreal because I'm like, yeah, the gaming world, it felt so like far from my reality. But no, a lot of people that are part of my not only work, but friends like you know my social circle a lot of them are gamers so they would send me like videos of me killing them and they're like oh my god you've killed me twice like oh give me the answers give me the proper answers like i'm done with you in this interrogation so this whole thing has been in terms of also like my intimate circle has been really rewarding because i love i mean of course it's great to read all of you and i read you all just know that i am reading my twitter and my instagram and now i'm gonna open a TikTok just to be in touch with you Amazing. and maybe maybe a twitch like i don't know i mean you're gonna make well, fun of me but i don't care let me know if you <laughs> if you need any help with that uh last one i saw okay. you for the first time in televisa novella ages ago uh -huh. i was on tour in afghanistan with the marines you stole my heart and you've done it again with Valeria. Love your performance from oh, Venom. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, the Marine? That's yeah. so cool. Like being able to provide some entertainment in that context of like whew, intense work means a lot to me. I think that's why I do it more than I'm not looking for fame, Dan. I'm an only child. If anything, I have. I have excessive attention, not the lack of it. <laughs> so I am not, I am not in this for fame. Like I, sometimes it's even hard for me because I'm kind of like a little dude. Like I'm on my pajamas traveling and I look terrible. Like I got pretty for you guys today, but this is not my usual. <laughs> I'm not into, I'm not into like fashion and like just being stupid. Do you like lazing blah, around? Blah, blah, blah. You like lazing around? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like a little boy. They raised me like a boy. I'm an only child. My my dad, when the girls were doing ballet, the way that he wanted to protect me was by teaching me how to protect myself, how to defend myself. So I did karate and my mom kind of cut my hair like a little boy just because she didn't know how to make braids or whatever. So I kind of had this boyish added to this tomboy situation from, my, from like like young age and i kind of feel like i'm i kept that personality so i'm kind of like i don't care about all these things and makeup and stuff so i'm not i'm not here because of the fame i'm here because i am passionate about the craft but also to be able to provide what what's his name what bands like this just said, uh like veneno you. yeah Veneno, yeah. like what Veneno just said, like just being able to take you out of like what what watching a movie does to me, just mm. getting out of my reality, whatever it is. Sometimes you just need to get out of it as therapy. That's why you meditate or, you know, just to be out of it for a little while and forget about everything else around you and being present over whatever it is, a movie, meditation, whatever it is. So if, if it's something that I did, and I can provide that for you, a space where you can just be present in that moment, enjoy that situation and forget about everything else and live magic through that. That's it. That's the reason why I, I work 12 or 13 hours a day, you know, because it's not a glamorous job. It's it's a lot of work. So, Veneno, I am so happy that I could provide, uh, I don't know, 12 years ago in Televisa. That's, that's when I lived in Mexico for five years. Wow. I, I worked in Televisa for like five years. And I, that's that's. The company that gave me a lot of the villain the, roles that oh, we were discussing, okay. right? But but wow. I think the one that he's referring to was more of like a comedic villain, which is a lot of fun because I got to do comedy, oh. um, which which I love. But I haven't been able to play comedy that much. But I love comedy. You see, I'm I'm kind of like silly and funny, so I, I I like to express that in my art. As yeah, well. I think so you'd I'm be fantastic, you know. Comedy, more comedy <laughs> stuff you. for sure you've got definitely yeah, got the it. range no maria thank you so much for taking the time today this has been one of my favorite interviews this was a lot of fun thank you so much <laughs> i'm so glad we got to talk then finally we made it yay is this gonna be around 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Can yeah, I yeah. Record it. I will give okay, you. I'll cool. give you everything. Um, is there anything quickly you want to say to the fans just before we wrap up? I just want to say gracias, gracias, cabrones. Puta madre, los amo, hijos de la chingada. Los amo, carajo. Like <laughs> it's just too much. What you've brought to me these last couple of weeks, or even like a month. It's been oh yeah, it's been a month. What a month. What a year this month has been for me. So thank you for being a part of it. And I am listening. Like I was just brainstorming with Dan about opening Twitch or TikTok. Any like way that we can open more channels of communication. Uh, I'm super open to it. Let this not be the last conversation about Valeria. And thank you for the support. Thank you for asking Call of Duty to make to send me to a different level multiplayer operator. I really hope it happens. It would be it amazing. Better happen. You better call them oh up right God. now. Thank you for all the energy towards amazing things about, about like different stuff going on around this character. And I'm pretty sure uh, we'll be seeing more of each other. And a lot of things are going to happen. I hope this regarding... isn't the last interview we do. Yeah. Let's hope there's Absolutely. more. Absolutely. I'm mm. super open to keep talking. So thank Beautiful. you guys. Thank you for being a part of this and for loving Valeria in all your weird, creepy, and amazing ways. Every <laughs> way is welcome. <laughs> amazing. I thank you. Love every, I, I'm creepy myself, as you can tell. So no, no. Visit. No, no, no. <laughs> and before I let you go, can Valeria say something to Dan as we close this out? Dan. Dan. Even the dogs in Los Almas know not to bark at me, pero tú, tú, tú de todas formas me ladraste. Y aquí estoy. I'm here with you. You decided to bark at me. And I responded. So gracias, cabrón. Gracias, cabroncito, for believing in me, for being a part of this adventure and for being the first one. I speak in English, too. Mwah. Besotes, mi amor. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, make sure to follow Maria on Instagram and when she makes that TikTok as well. And yeah. face, Facebook and Twitter, the whole shebang. I'll leave it in the description. Maria, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. Mwah, thank you for this. It was amazing. I hope to hear from the fans that were around. My pleasure. I'll be reading you. All right. See you soon. Take care. The greatest interviewer of all time. Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you, especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always, always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm going to come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now. Just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs> Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan? You and I are going to take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it! Dan Allen! You and I are going dark now! Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. Tune <laughs> into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. Been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belts? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Allen. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Yeah.
Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, how lost for life, partner? Your face, your ass, what's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat babies! Everybody knows that! Well, there you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. There you go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. That was a fantastic chat. I really enjoyed that with Maria. She is a fireball. She's hilarious. She's brilliant. And we hope to see more of her in the next game. Guys, that's pretty much it for the Modern Warfare 2 interviews. I've done my best to reach out to uh, Glenn, who plays Shepard, and of course, Warren Cole, both uh, very hard to get in touch. I will, I will continue to try, but don't expect anything. But guys, it's been um, it's been one hell of a ride playing through this game and interviewing all the actors. And there's plenty more to come in terms of operators. You know, I've spoken to the voice actors behind Rose and some of your favorite operators. So you, you'll see that very soon as well. But um, it has been one hell of a ride. I hope you've enjoyed it. And for anyone that donated, didn't get their question read today, we will. I will try to hold on to those for next time with Maria because I just don't believe this will be the last time we speak to her for this role. Um, you know, just such a fan reception. I, I can't imagine this will be the last time we see her or we talk to her. So I will definitely keep those. And, and you know, you've, it's gone to a really great cause today, Game on Cancer, Um you know, we've raised some really good money. <clears throat> Who have we got in here just quickly before I head off? Duke, Goliath, Gabriel, AJ, Eagle, Adam Sin, Konik, Croc, Back to Gaming, Birkin, Ghost, Transformy, Lana. Still waiting for the Christopher Jai, <laughs> yeah. Love it every time you play this trailer at the end. Yeah, it gets me hyped, man. It really does. Thank you for the interview. It was my pleasure. It is my pleasure, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. We're heading into Christmas. I hope you get spoiled. Um, and look out for plenty more content, guys. Uh, we're gonna we're probably gonna do another stream with Neil and Soap at some point. So look out for that. Um, I'd love to hop in a war zone with maybe you know Elliot Knight at Gaz or or someone or. You know, I think that'd be a lot of fun playing Warzone with some of the guys. Uh, maybe even Marie, you never know. And then I've got a Red Dead finale stream. Any of you that have been watching the Red Dead finale, uh, the Red Dead stream with Rob Weedoff. Uh, I've been playing Red Dead with the John Marston voice actor. Um And... Uh, <clears throat> and um, that is going to happen Sunday. We're going to close that one out. So I hope you can join us for that. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, have a great day. And I will see you later.